Uh, thank you, Simon. And again, yes, thank you, Natalie. Um, and yeah, lots of linking themes. Just before I go on to uh, factory farming, I just want to, again, um, set the scene about where we are in terms of the climate and ecological emergency. Both are extremely serious. Um, uh, it, we're currently at 1.1, 1.2 degrees of warming. We are on course for three, four, and in the absolute worst circumstances, seven degrees by the end of this century if we don't act quickly and act fast. Um, currently in uh, Southeast Asia are some astronomical uh, temperatures, uh, 42 degrees in India, 44 in Myanmar, Bangladesh. I mean, these aren't going to go lower uh, as the summer progresses and we ourselves in the UK will be facing another extremely hot summer, but still one of the coolest to come. The, the, the human cost, in uh, the Horn of Africa, 43,000 people have died uh, of um, uh, starvation due to drought, uh, half of whom are children. These are figures that we do need to um, bear in mind um, when we discuss uh, any kind of policy taking us into the future. The other thing I would say is that while people are very focused on climate, it's really important to understand the, the nature of the ecological breakdown. Again, very, very serious. Something I often say is that even if you address the climate emergency completely and utterly right now, what we have done to the planet through monocropping and industrial agriculture amongst many, many other things, the land use, um, has, has left our planet devastated. Um, so it's, it's, um, it's really worth thinking about that, not only in terms of the quality of our lands, but also in terms of biodiversity. More than 40 million birds have disappeared from the UK's sky since the 1970s. Um, since the rise of human civilization, 83% of wild mammals have been lost, 80% of marine mammals, 50, I mean, it just goes on and on. And in the past 50 years, humanity has wiped out 68% of mammals. And this is, this is the stat that I think always makes people stop in their tracks. Today, 36% of the world's mammals are human, 60% are farmed animals, and only 4% are wild. And that 4% is going to drop continually as they are exposed to the effects of the climate, as they're exposed to hunting, greater land use. There are now more farmed sheep than there are wild animals. It is unmitigated natural disaster. And these are the systems not only that we value of and in and of themselves, because they are miraculous in this universe, but that we rely on them to, 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 to survive. Um, and But now I want to go on to one of the main causes of, of this, and I, I am going to say it is animal agriculture, it's not just factory, and we will come into factory farming, but I think animal agriculture is increasingly having a spotlight shone on it as a really significant cause of the position that we're in. Um, just a couple, there's a lot of stats, I'm so sorry about this, but half of the world's habitable land is used for agriculture, so half of the habitable land on this planet is agriculture, and 76% of that land is used for animal agriculture, whether that's in grazing or whether that's in um, uh, providing food for that, the livestock, for, for the animals. I, I don't want to use the, the term livestock too much uh, issues. Um, um, and because of this, because of the, the deforestation and obviously because of the way that ruminants emit um, a variety of, of greenhouse gases, animal agriculture is now um, suspected to cause between 14.5 and 51% of greenhouse gas emissions. The 51% is a huge, it's quite a huge um, um, uh, uh, disparity there, but it's it's taking into the 51% takes into account uh, effects of deforestation. And animal agriculture also a leading emitter of methane, which is a much more potent greenhouse gas than, than carbon dioxide. We're looking at unbelievable numbers, six, 76 to 80 billion land animals killed for food every year, uh, while 1 billion and rising people are going hungry amongst them those 21,500 children who died within the last uh, few months um, and 
But let's look at factory farming because by far factory farming is the dominant farming system on this planet. Um, incredibly destructive. 75% um, uh, of the meat produced in this country is, is uh, comes from factory farms. In the US, it's even more, 99%. And we know that uh, we are now seeing that factory farming is, of all the farming systems, absolutely the worst for the climate and for the land around. So now I will bang out some facts to you, please bear with me. Um, for example, we have talked a little bit about carbon emissions, but let's also look at resource use of, uh, uh, well, actually, no, this is pretty much uh, a resource use of, of, of industrial uh, farming. Um, it is a, uh, it uses a lot of water and it uh, pollutes the land. Uh, through runoff, but I'll, let me give you some facts. I'm, I'm sorry, I've, t I've been taken aback a little because my stats are, they also apply to, to animal agriculture in general. Let, let's look at this one, for example. The grain it takes to produce one burger could feed 200 people. One burger, 200 people. This is the kind of use of resources that are dwindling in a climate and ecological emergency that I think we need to investigate. Um, let's look at water use. About one third of the world's water consumption is for producing animal products. On a heating planet where water will become an even more precious resource than it is now, do we want to use one third of the world's water for producing animal products? And I have more stats, a single egg takes 240 litres of water to produce. I presume that's all through, you know, um, from from making sure that the chicken is hydrated to to, to washing out its, its cages. Um, and I don't know about you, but I find it very difficult to drink a litre of water a year. So 240 litres a day. So 240 litres of water is, is for me 240 days for a single egg. Again, when we come, we look at resource use, uh, this is quite, uh, uh, an astronomically bizarre way of using um, our, our dwindling precious and natural resources. And then we have issues like water pollution. So because the animals are very densely packed and just to, to reiterate or just to say that the factory farming is, is basically animals jammed into these indoor spaces, um, very rarely see the light of day. Um, it, it's, it's about a factory. The, the animal is the product, the animal is a commodity, and it's about getting as much uh, profit from a single animal as possible um, and so they're jammed into these spaces they don't see the light they are they are often very very ill because they are not in any way kept in natural sort of natural environments but we're going to come into the animals in a second um, because let's look at water pollution they're very densely packed they produce more manure than can be absorbed by that particular land because it's all so densely and so you get these issues of runoff so we are looking at places like the river Wye which are being desperately uh, now critical really because of the number of chickens and dairy cows and the problem of uh, problem disposing of manure of farms in that area we're seeing i mean the, the whole issue of england's rivers has become has really risen up the agenda and and most of what's happening to it is to do again with animal agriculture it's not just water um a recent study has shown that farming is responsible for more than a quarter of the particle pollution in UK cities. Ammonia from rural agriculture is so large, it is now the dominant source of particulate matter pollution in UK cities. Um, and then we need to also look at how you keep animals healthy when they're in these dreadfully, dreadfully um, condensed conditions. And of course, they're not healthy um, and they are widely fed antibiotics. So one of the things that we will have to be looking at is, is um, increased antibiotic resistance in the humans who eat the animals who are fed these, these antibiotics. Um, and also we need to look at pandemics. Uh, we now know that, uh, you know, three out of four of the world's new and emerging infectious diseases come from animals, often in factory farm conditions where, where disease can spread like wildflower. We are, wildfire. We are now seeing the devastating impact of avian flu, again, which originate, originated from a factory farm or factory farmed conditions, uh, is, has passed to wild birds and is now starting to appear in wild mammals. And, and 
and what chance now of passing to humans as well. So factory farms are centres of disease. Now I will come, as I sort of, my second to last part, come to the animals, because I think, and this is going to be key going forward, it, there was a citizen assembly uh, a few years back um, where they were, it was fantastic because it invited ordinary people, citizens, to debate uh, key issues of the time uh, around the climate emergency. And they were sort of, they made some great recommendations, more taxes on frequent flyers, you know. But the recommendations they made on um, transitioning to the plant-based food system that we know is better for the planet were, were fairly mild uh, regarding people said they should be voluntary, voluntary choices. When I heard this, I thought, well, they've not been given enough of the science. Um, and the other thing that they have not been told about is animal welfare in the factory farm. And I cannot describe to you what I have seen through undercover investigations that is happening within the factory farm system. I do not want to upset this evening for you, but a factory farms are the site of the greatest distress and discomfort and cruelty. And I think we really do need to examine this as a nation of animal lovers, the worst abuses of animals are being kept from us. Uh, they are, you know, our factory farms are just, if you drive past them in the countryside, they just look, look huge shuttered barns. You can't see anything inside. Um, and what is happening now increasingly, and I'm very grateful for this, is that there's more and more information coming out due to undercover investigations, but also more activism. Um, just really seeing uh, that this is a food system that, that, that treats sentient beings um, like commodities, as, as, as I've said before. And there are certain incidents also that are starting to make people question this system much more thoroughly as it needs to be. This is an ethical issue. Recently, 18,000 cows died in a single fire in Texas. Um, lots of people were saying, well, why are 18,000 cow, dairy cows, I hasten to have being kept indoors. That is how they're kept in the UK. Um, and the doors were locked and 18,000 cows died. And the cries of distress as that those barns went up in flames is enough to make anyone question not only the factory farming system, but I also think the treatment of the animals in uh, in the factory but but also the treatment of animals throughout society we did that gratefully i'm i'm feeling that more and more questions are being raised by this what we're also understanding is that in the factory farm system the animals are killed at very very young ages cows are slaughtered at one point one and a half years old they could live to 25 Pigs are killed at six months old, uh, they could live to 15, uh, and it goes on and on. Chickens are killed at six weeks, they could live to eight years. Um, this is a system that is not working. Um, in the industrial agriculture system, I mean, as Natalie referred to, we're, we in the global north, I hasten to add, not in the global south so much, we are throwing away between a quarter and a third of all food produced, including some of those animals. We are destroying our land, we are destroying our planet um, because of an adherence to a way of eating that is not serving us any longer um, as it needs to and it is not resilient to the future. Uh, animal agriculture currently produces or, or gives us only sort of, I think it was 18% of the calories we need to survive. So we're, we're getting most of our calories from plant-based um, uh, ingredients anyway. And, and I would argue that we need to up that. We need to regenerate uh, the land. We need to be more respectful to the planet that we're living on. There are options. Um, I've worked with several campaigns or, or been part of several campaigns that are calling strenuously for a plant-based food system in which the farmers are assisted in transitioning from a damaging animal agriculture or factory farm system into a plant-based food system, growing oats, growing, growing uh, plants that are indigenous to our country, for example. Um, there will be no lack of jobs in the create transition. We will all have so much work to do to build our resilience, to mitigate the effects of the climate emergency, to build solidarity with other nations. 
these, this could be joyful work if we embraced it now. Um, and there I'd like to, to, to wrap up. I'm sure I've missed so, so many points and I look forward to the questions. Thank you so much.